I welcome you all in this video lecture on unit number one fundamentals of machine design and design against static load. This is the part one that is we are going to focus on fundamentals of machine design. So this is the next article from this part one fundamentals of machine design that is a basic procedure of a design of a machine element. In the last in the last lecture we have studied the procedure of machine design and now we are going to study the procedure of design of machine element. The difference between this procedure is that in the last lecture that we have studied procedure of machine design is the complete procedure of complete machine okay procedure of machine design consists of the procedure of designing of complete machine but here we are going to focus on only design of machine element that is we are going to focus on only one element of that machine that is individual element of that machine for example suppose a gearbox consists of six parts then from scratch to the final drawing of for design of that gearbox we have to follow the procedure of machine design and if there is one part from that gearbox let us say the shaft if we want to design the shaft particularly then we have to follow the design of machine element that means this design of machine element is the one of the sub step in the design procedure of machine design okay so let us start the basic procedure of design of machine element so first one is the specify functions of element then next is determine the forces acting on the element third one is select suitable material for the element next is determine failure mode of element determine geometric dimensions of element modify dimensions for assembly and manufacture and design check design at critical cross sections and the last one is prepare working drawing of element so these are the seven steps for design of machine element and as i said it is this procedure is used to design a individual element of machine and the same procedure is followed for all the parts for the all the elements of machine and this design of machine element is the sub step of procedure of machine design you can refer the procedure of machine design in that there is one step design of individual component design of individual component is nothing but the design of machine element okay so first of all we'll start with uh, step number 1 specify functions of machine element this is the first step specify functions of machine element now in this step the functions of parts are specified that means as this is, this procedure is for individual element one part at a time is designed goes through all these steps while designing one part that design goes through all these steps suppose you are designing a bearing then first of all you have to mention its functions what are the functions of bearing that is to support the rotating shaft okay to reduce the friction like this way you have to mention the functions of the part that you are going to design suppose you are designing the key then you have to mention its functions like to transmit the torque between the shaft and machine part like gear pulley or sprocket correct so similarly if you are designing the spring in clock then you have to mention the functions of spring in clock to store and release the energy now this um, specifying the function is very important so that you can understand that what is the function of that part and based on that what type of load that bear, uh, that part is going to face okay so b depending on the functions we can able to predict the type of forces that may uh, act on the part now the second step is determine forces acting on the part once you specify the functions of element you, you you will be able to find out the forces acting on the element because you knew you know now the all the functions of the part that you are going to design now in this step the forces are determined and uh, the always the determination of forces start with the free body diagram first of all free free body diagram is prepared to find out the forces and uh, some of the examples of forces on the machine elements are these are the some examples of forces that may act on the machine part not every time all the forces acts but <coughs> one or more forces acts on 
the machine parts and these are the some examples of forces that acts on the machine part so first one is the external force due to energy power or torque transmission now force due to energy transmission force due to power transmission or force due to torque transmission is the first example of type of force and this type of force is considered as a useful load or useful force in the machine element now second type of uh, force that may be a static force due to a dead weight that is a self weight of a machine element and third one is force due to frictional resistance so these are just examples you can uh, similarly list out the um, forces like inertia force or uh, like other things like uh, centrifugal force because of the uh, unbalanced mass in the machine element likewise you can list out the uh, forces that are uh, relevant to that the machine element that you are going to design so in this way uh, in this step the forces are determined using free body diagram and the forces that uh, component is subjected its uh, list is prepared and all the forces acting on the parts are determined using free body diagram so third one is the select suitable material for element now the selection of material is carried out in this step number 3 and these are the some factors which are used to find out the select the material first one is the availability then cost mechanical properties and manufacturing considerations while selecting materials all these four parameters are considered are taken into consideration and proper and suitable material is selected for example the whatever the material that you are going to select for a machine element that must be available easily its cost must be always less and then depending on mechanical property what type of mechanical property is required for the machine element that you are going to design for example Uh, suppose uh, you are designing the spring then stiffness is very important parameter so you should select material for spring which should which is having good stiffness okay if you are designing a material for bearing then you should have uh, wear resistance then uh, heat con heat conductivity then uh, less coefficient of friction so likewise uh, you have to select the material for bearing by considering such mechanical properties suppose you are designing the gear then gear should have a uh, good wear resistance then uh, high hardness okay so like this properties mechanical properties you have to consider while selecting the material for machine element and the last factor for selecting the material is manufacturing considerations for example uh, the machine pa- machine element that you are going to design by which manufacturing process that you are by which manufacturing process you are going to manufacture that machine element suppose you are uh, going to design the shaft okay then the shaft is uh, manufactured by machining process okay so that uh, material which is going to be selected for shaft that must have good machinability suppose you are going to design a part like a large size gear now the large size gear can be produced by casting process okay as its size is large it cannot be produced by machining because the machining of large size gear becomes difficult so large size gears are manufactured by casting process so the material that you are going to de- select for that large size gear must have good castability okay now suppose you are uh, you are designing such a element which involves some welding process okay some welding is to be carried out Uh, in that uh, element that you are going to design then the material that you are going to select for such a component which requires welding that material should have good weldability okay so uh, such factors are considered while selecting the material and by considering above factors suitable material for machine element is selected so in this step just we have to select the material by considering all these four factors now step number 4 is failure criteria now in this step failure criteria are determined or mentioned or predicted for example the if you are designing the shaft okay if you are designing the shaft it will not uh, div- uh, it will not fail by yielding or it will not fail by fracture it will fail first by elastic deformation because on the shaft generally the machine parts like gear is mounted or pulley is mounted or flywheel is mounted and because of the self weight of gear self weight of flywheel or a self weight of pulley that shaft rotates eccentrically okay and because of that eccentricity uh, 
whatever the function is there which is expected from the shaft that cannot be fulfilled if it is subjected to elastic deformation suppose uh, on the shaft gears are mounted and if that shaft starts rotating eccentrically then the proper meshing between gear cannot take place and that means if the elastic deformation of the shaft takes place it will not perform its function satisfactorily so it can be considered as it can be considered as failure if it deform elastically now the suppose you are uh, designing a machine element which is made from ductile material now we know that if it is made from ductile material then it will fail it may fail by yielding yielding means deformation it may fail by yielding that means deformation so for such component for such machine element which is made up from ductile material yielding criteria must be selected now other on the other hand suppose the machine element is to be made up of brittle material if the machine element that you want to design if it is made up from brittle material then the failure criteria must be selected that is failure by fracture so depending on the material depending on the application you have to select the proper failure criteria so in this step just we have to select the failure criteria of that machine element that you are going to design then in this step number 5 we have to determine the geometric dimensions of element now to find out the geometric dimensions of component failure criteria is taken into consideration very important to find out the dimensions of component failure criteria is considered now in simple cases the dimensions are determined on the basis of allowable stress or deflection okay and remember that now you just remember that here there is a relation between this allowable stress and failure criteria okay and we are going to uh, study this relation between allowable stress and uh, failure criteria in uh, unit number 2 or oh, sorry uh, part 2 of this unit number 1 in detail so in this step number 5 dimensions are determined based on the failure criteria and allowable stress or deflection is used to find out the dimensions in the step number 6 the design modification is carried out if needed the geometric dimensions of the machine elements are modified from assembly and manufacturing considerations okay so if from assembly point of view it is necessary to change the dimensions the dimensions are changed if from manufacturing consideration it is necessary to change the dimensions dimensions are changed otherwise the dimensions are kept as it is and the last step is prepare working drawing of element now if all the steps are completed successfully that is functions are listed out forces are determined material is selected failure mode is decided geometric dimensions are for finalized and uh, dimensions are modified as per assembly and manufacturing considerations and then if all things are done then at the end at the end the working drawing of element is prepared and in this drawing elements mentioned are dimensions tolerances surface finish grades geometric tolerances and special production requirement like heat treatment if at some particular region of that element machine element if some heat treatment is to be carried out then that uh, symbols are mentioned on that part in drawing so such parameters are mentioned in the drawing while preparing the final drawing for the machine element so these are the steps for designing of machine element again i will repeat here design procedure of machine design is different machine design in means what design of complete machine including six seven or multiple parts and design of machine element is the des design of one of the part of that machine let us say gearbox gear for gearbox we have to use the uh, procedure of machine design and one of the part like shaft for design of shaft we have to use the procedure of design of machine element so this is about uh, this article if you have any doubt or any query please mention in the comment section